Hi, everybody. My name is Mike. I am one of the assistants in the Center for Creativity. Today, we are doing a workshop on doodling. So the point of this workshop is to get you out of some of your initial anxieties about doodling, uh, because this workshop is designed for people who like the idea of being able to draw or doodle, but uh, don't feel a lot of comfort in doing it or feel anxiety when doing it, uh, which is really the opposite of what doodling is meant for. So hopefully that is what you're here for, is to get some tips on how to make doodling a little easier. If you've watched a lot of YouTube videos on doodling, a lot of them give you their tips on how they come up with their ideas, which doesn't really give you much of an idea of their thought process. It just gives you exactly what they are doing. So I'm going to try to give you something concrete here for this. First, let's start off by talking about what doodling is. So very easy, the definition of doodling is an aimless or casual scribble, design, or sketch. In the definition of the word, it is not supposed to be fully fleshed out drawing or idea. In it. So the important question is, if you don't have that creative spark, or you can't think of an idea, why are you even trying to do this in the first place? Well, there are a couple different reasons, of course is that it relieves stress, which you will find similar to adult coloring books, um, improved focus. And so I used to do this a lot. I would doodle while also taking notes. Uh, it really helped you learn. So just having a way to process through doodling that can either be doodling while you are listening and then taking notes on the side or literally doodling what you are hearing. Uh, and that goes into the next one, helps express emotion. So mentally, emotionally, what you're going through, you can sort of use doodling to process this. Not something I can necessarily give you in this workshop. What I can try and help you do with doodling is provide you with a low stakes outlet to experiment, play around with different techniques. And one thing doodling will inevitably help you do if you continue to do it is develop your own artistic style and comfort with coming up with ideas and what to draw. So these are all my personal examples of doodles. So I'm going to talk about the process. I will go back to this slide later, but I want to do this before I show you a quick clip of a doodle I made. So everyone's going to pick a theme. You're going to draw the object. We're going to choose tangles or patterns. So we're going to use Zen tangles because there are a lot of patterns you can find online after this. You'll draw the patterns, you will pen it all in, you will erase your initial lines, and then you will add any details that you want. I just want you to be able to keep that process in mind as you see in the next 30 seconds what I did. <laughs> Erase the lines there, added some of my patterns, pen those in, um, more patterns, pen those in, erased a whole bunch of lines from that. So I started adding details and color, added more details, erased some of my initial ideas for details, um, and then just kept adding details. Just wanted to show you the process of what it looked like. Three hours of doodling went into this. So what you're gonna need, you're going to need paper, pencil, eraser, pen, um, and colors if you want. So the idea, again, don't put too much thought into this. Remember, it's supposed to be absent-minded. So don't try and make perfect things, just draw. If things start to look weird, you should really embrace that because that's how you're going to start to actually get more creative and work through. So even with that candlestick one, I started thinking about different ways that it would drip onto the candle and then how the flame might move and then what the smoke might look like. So you should really let your head flow as much as possible. If that stresses you out, then don't do that. Just draw the objects that I will give you. If you get to the point where you're overthinking things or just are feeling stressed out, you should stop. If you want to doodle to try and get better at drawing, if that is your goal here, you should set, potentially set a goal for how much you want to doodle and continue to refine that because you don't want to get stressed out by doing this. If you find yourself developing certain habits or patterns in your drawings, embrace those. That is how you can develop a style of drawing, a style of doodling. That is how you do it, is just letting things happen and develop naturally. And then copy it first. So hopefully you won't need to copy. These objects will be easy enough. But um, if you're trying to draw or doodle, copy other people's styles. I will give you a Zentangle patterns, which you can literally just copy so you don't have to think about what to do for those. That is a good way to learn how to draw, how to doodle, and what to think about. 
And then if you want to do this long term, find yourself a good sketchbook. I use one of these soft backed books and I have a whole bunch of empty sketchbooks I was looking through for examples that have half pages filled, uh, very empty. I just never ended up using them because I don't like the feeling. So sketchbooks can make a difference too if you are trying to do this as a long-term drawing process. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. This is a random object generator. So I want you to go to this website and just generate an object. If it is something that is too difficult, please feel free to refresh it. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna draw the object. I want you to try to erase as little as possible what you will do is you will use your marker or pen later to refine and uh, make exact lines. So if you find yourself going back to your eraser a lot, you're probably overthinking. If you want to make one very big one, you can. If you want to make a bunch of small ones, you can. If you want to write the name of the object somewhere on the paper or just write that word several times, you can, that is all doodling. <laughs> Uh, and then you're going to put the patterns behind or around or inside of that is really up to you. Um, so my example was background for all of the patterns, but for the live drawing I will do, as you are all doing this, I will put them inside of the object. Uh, and then you're going to pen everything in, erase your lines, um, and then if you want to add any cross hatching or other types of detail, color things in, this is when you will do that. And remember that this doesn't have to be all at once. So if you want to get in a pattern of drawing one object, penning that in, drawing another object, penning that in, doing some outlines and then penning those in, you can continue to do this in any sort of pattern that you want. So if it feels natural to draw an object and then pen it, draw another object, pen that in, um, or just draw everything and then pen all of that in. Once the music here can give you about 10 minutes to just draw. Like I said, mine is a shirt button, so... I didn't talk about this, um, but you can use any type of pen for these. I prefer pens that are finer. Um, these are three different pens. They're all kind of running out, but I use these three pens pretty interchangeably when I'm doing Sharpie, this Pilot pen is extra fine. These Stadler ones. Go to this slide here with all of these zentangles on. If at any point you find yourself stuck, just try and fill in blank space of any kind that you have. Thank you so all for coming. Squares. If you want to find the zentangle patterns, I just got them from searching for zentangle patterns on Google. That's all I've got. Thank you all for coming. Bye, everybody.